I bet you thought I would come here and say super cliche words like saudade or kafune, didn't you? I know you did. Welcome! If you don't know me yet, my name is Maite and I'm here to teach you all about Brazilian Portuguese, talk about Brazilian culture, Brazilian food, and also I do a bunch of vlogs, sometimes in Portuguese, sometimes in English, but the most important thing is that everything has duo subtitles here so if you're learning brazilian portuguese that's gonna help you e se você é brasileiro e tá aprendendo inglês as legendas também vão te ajudar muito today i'm here to share with you guys my favorite words in brazilian portuguese i'm not really talking about the meaning of these words but mostly how they sound, their pronunciation, and uh, the sounds and the movements that I have to do with my mouth in order to pronounce that word. Don't get me wrong, I do love the word saudade. That is one of my favorite words in Brazilian Portuguese, and I also love the word cafuné. I feel like I should record a video about cafuné too. I will do that in the near future. But I'm here to talk about other words that, in my opinion, have this beautiful sound to them. They have like this nice rhythm. They are overlooked, I guess, whenever people are learning Portuguese, but that's just my opinion, right? Okay, so let's get started. I love the word gambiarra. Gambiarra. I don't know if it's the mix. Um, we have a G sound, then we have a NAM sound, then we have the double R when we have to use our throat. I just feel like it has a super cute rhythm to it and um, a lot of people struggle to pronounce this word. I feel like especially Americans and British people that have a really hard time with the double R. Gambiaha. Gambiaha. It took me a really long time to find similar expressions in English to this word. So, gambiarra in Portuguese is when you have to improvise and you are improvising without a bunch of resources. So, you have to be super creative. Gambiarras in Brazil, at least from my experience, they are usually ugly because we don't care too much about the aesthetics, right? We care about functionality. So the final goal is to get something to work when you don't have um, a bunch of resources, just to get the job done and not caring too much about how it looks. I feel like in English, the translation could be a quick fix or to do a MacGyver, which is super funny to me. I learned this just a little bit ago, like a few months ago, and it really hit me because in Brazil, we also talk about like uh, MacGyver as someone that um, just fixes everything and is super tough and strong and gets stuff done, uh, but we don't use it interchangeably with the word gambiarra. But I found it super interesting that here in the US, People use that. I've never heard that before when I lived in the UK. O chuveiro parou de funcionar e eu tive que fazer uma gambiarra para poder tomar banho. O chuveiro parou de funcionar e eu tive que fazer uma gambiarra para poder tomar banho. The second word I wanted to share with you guys is the word guaxinim. Guaxinim. I love this word because of the beginning, gua, gua. I really like the sound of the G and the U together, gua, gua shini, and there's the X as well. I don't know, I just really like the rhythm and how it sounds and it feels like, I don't know, something laid back and it just gives me nice vibes, you know? Gua shini. And the translation of the word guaxini is raccoon in English, raccoon. And whenever I picture a raccoon and I use the word in English, I feel like it doesn't match. Because in my mind, a raccoon is this cute animal, right? And they're super cute and have, they have those little fingers that do this movement, just like we humans do. And raccoon in English to me comes off as such a strong word that doesn't really match the image of a raccoon in my mind. I don't know if you guys understand what I mean. 
But in Portuguese, guaxini is like this cute word. And it goes well together with a picture of an image of a guaxini in my mind. So in English, it sounds wrong to me. And in Portuguese, it just sounds so right that every time I see a guaxini, even here, there's like a family of guaxinis who live close to me here in New York City. I look at them, I cannot think of the word raccoon. Just the word guaxini comes to my mind. E é muito engraçado porque quando eu era uma adolescente no Brasil, eu não sabia falar inglês, eu não falava nada de inglês e sempre odiei inglês, nunca quis aprender. Porém, eu ouvia, tinha a influência de músicas americanas no meu dia a dia, música pop. Tinha essa música que chamava Got What You Want, Got What You Want. E eu não falava nada de inglês. Naquela época, quando eu era uma adolescente, Nenhuma amiga minha também falava inglês. E era difícil no Brasil encontrar pessoas que falavam inglês fluente. Então, a gente não sabia qual era a letra da música. Não tinha muita internet disponível facilmente para a gente ir lá e pesquisar a música. Então, a gente inventava as palavras que a gente achava que era. Então, nessa música, parecia que eles cantavam assim... Soltar um guaxinim, agarra o guaxinim, soltar um guaxinim, agarra o guaxinim, nará, nará. E eu lembro que durante muito tempo, sempre que eu ouvia essa música, eu ficava imaginando o guaxinim lá. Até hoje eu não sei o significado dessa música, eu não aprendi a letra correta dessa música e eu acho que eu não quero estragar essa nostalgia que eu tenho com essa música junto com o guaxinim, porque às vezes quando toca, quando eu tô na rua, no bar, na balada, toca essa música, eu só fico pensando lá nos guaxinins. Então essa é uma palavra muito, muito querida pra mim. E a terceira palavra que eu quero compartilhar com vocês hoje é a palavra pipoca. Pipoca. I feel like this word is overlooked. I think it's an easy word for people to learn because it's so... It's kind of similar to English, popcorn, pipoca, popcorn, pipoca. I can see how they can be connected, popcorn and a pipoca. And I just feel like pipoca also matches an image of popcorn in my mind. So when I look at popcorn, I feel like, huh, you really are pipoca. It just feels nice. You know, I'm gonna go to the movies, I'm gonna get some pipoca. And it's just nice looking at something and having that feeling of, wow, you and the word that describes you go along together. So, yeah, that's just a feel-good feeling, I guess. Pipoca. And I like how it kind of pops out of your mouth and that resembles how pipocas are made, right? Pipoca. I just love it. It sounds silly, but I love it so much. A pipoca. Eu tô com tanta vontade de comer pipoca hoje. Eu tô com tanta vontade de comer pipoca hoje. Você prefere pipoca doce ou salgada? Eu prefiro pipoca salgada. Então é isso. Aqui estão algumas das minhas palavras favoritas em português. E eu gostaria que vocês me contassem aqui nos comentários se vocês já conheciam todas essas palavras e se vocês acham que são palavras também legais e bonitas de serem pronunciadas. Se vocês também têm palavras favoritas em português, me contem aqui embaixo, porque eu estou sempre curiosa e eu adoro essa troca de informações e conhecimentos que a gente tem aqui no canal. Não se esqueçam de curtir esse vídeo e compartilhar com as suas famílias e amigos e eu vejo vocês no próximo vídeo. Tchau!